It's a dangerous world out there on the internet. One bad attempt at humour, one off-colour book week costume, or one lapse of parenting judgement, and you can be damned for life. crazy. Everyone's shared content on the planet. Everyone's got an iPhone, everyone's got a laptop, everyone's got a, a PC, everyone's using Google, um, and there's always a slip up of content somewhere. There's no better indication of how big a problem this has become than the existence of Brendan McAlpine, AKA the cleaner. Brendan lives on the Gold Coast, but works in cyberspace. He's in the growing business of online reputation management. He is able to delve deep into the social media mire and in some cases, fix up your mess. I'm thinking of you as a sort of cleaner who comes in and tidies up the scene. Correct. Removes the evidence. Correct. <laughs> How's business? Business is good. Meeting Brendan is a happy coincidence, given that I have a little online contretemps of my own to sort out. Remember that unfortunate incident with the New Zealand Prime Minister from earlier in the year? I've met a lot of Prime Ministers in my time, but none so young, not too many so smart, and never one so attractive. The online reaction was swift, judgment was passed, and it was mostly unforgiving. It's interesting how much people have been counting back to <laughs> the conception, as it were. Can you remove me? Can you give me such deep cover that the Kiwi Prime Minister and I have never met? We say never say never. We try every possible means to get the content down. So let's look at your footprint. So when we type in your name, because who are you? Are you're an asset to Google. You're their data. If I'm you're an asset, in they're in trouble. Woolly blames cultural differences for creepy sexist remarks. Sexist? Who's yeah. that? Mm -hmm. All those years of having great fun and speaking to some of the most famous people on earth. Yep. And it, it's, um, it's pop. the it's... Prime Minister of a small South Pacific country that... Yeah. <laughs> this is your uh, legacy. But not even the cleaner can help some people. Some sins will never be forgotten. Barry Hall. Barry Hall, yeah. He is beyond help, isn't he? Beyond your help. The problem for These Barry people are is, awful. Is, is getting another job. Yeah. I've seen it firsthand with many people that have said the wrong thing and now the trolls then go and target their workplace. And then that business is in a situation where they can't keep this person employed because of what the trolls are doing to their digital footprint. What happens now? Where do you go now? What's your career? What are you going to do? I don't know. I really don't know. I've got a reassess of where I'm at. And as I said, we, we're very blessed and lucky that, you know, we've got a roof over our head. We can, you know, eat and all that sorts of all those sorts of things. And I've got the violin out saying, poor me. Uh, I do the crime, I do the time. But, you know, I'm not You qualified. don't know how long the sentence is. Well, no, I, I, I've got no income and, and there's no real light at the end of the tunnel of when that will change or when that will be. So it's, it's a big cocker. My mate Nigel's a fair dick of fucking legend. Kevin Bloody Wilson is often accused of being racist. People say, you can't say that about black people. Fuck off, it was Nigel that told me that. <laughs> he tells me it's piss funny, I pass it on to you and it's fucking racist. I don't get that shit. But this audience, who love him, certainly don't think he's a racist. Fitzroy Crossing. Yeah. Always got a root in Fitzroy Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we might be related. <laughs> Mum of three and opinion writer Georgie Dent likes a joke as much as the next person, but she doesn't see the funny side of Kev. Comedic geniuses do not need to resort to being offensive. Um, or derogatory towards individuals or groups of individuals to be genuinely funny. In my view, a lot of what some people would say is PC or um, is actually maintaining standards of decency. People are going to say that you're a dinosaur. If some people think that, I'm fine with that. Um, I've made a very good living out of being a dinosaur, but I really don't think either that it stops with me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably just reflecting what the most of Australia, certainly what all of my mates are thinking. So if that's it, if that's, if that's a dinosaur, I'm a dinosaur. Maybe we're like strange creatures left behind by a retreating tide on the beach. 
Yeah, I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, Australia is noted for its sense of humour and, and that's part of our culture and part of our culture is taking the piss out of each other. In the world of social media, no sooner do you think it than it's broadcast. In my line of work, if you hadn't noticed, we actually put some thought into what we send out into the ether. But I'm a bit worried about those beers on the table. No, Charlie, all your stories have beer in them. At the end of this agonising, I'm inclined to think that the best way to combat the shallow intensity of social media might be to have no part of it. So I'm not on social media anymore and I don't miss it one little bit. You can still say whatever you like about this story, but you'll have to write me a letter because if you tweet or Facebook, I won't know about it. I'm enjoying the silence. Social media and me, in the words of the great Kevin Bloody Wilson, Dilly Gaff. Big finish, do I look like I give a fuck, Dilly Gaff. <laughs> Whoa! Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.